made a run, then we make the run, and just, you know, they, ca they came in and got into us, the Bowser kids, you know, got them all fired up by denying everything and, you know, fighting with Lauren, and then Lauren, we finally answered, I think about the 10 and a half minute mark, and go on our run, and, but it starts with the defensive intensity, because it was just so much drive and kick, ISO one-on-one, -on -one. there wasn't a lot of second and third side for them, they just, they do a really good job, they've got, got some perimeter guards that can just play you one-on-one -on -one and get to the rim, or, or raise up and shoot a couple tough twos, and once we finally forced more tough twos and, and got some tough rebounds in front of the rim, then we got, get an opportunity to go in transition. And then Chelsea's lose because scattering report defense, there's no scattering report defense for transition. I mean, everybody's running and trying to sprint and trying to make a good pass. And we throw a couple of really good balls to her and a couple and ones and a, and a couple. And then Nat hits the big three. And then we stick all those free throws down the stretch. But give them credit. I mean, battle, battle I said last year, and I whispered it because I was afraid it might come true, and it did. So if that kid can figure out how to score from behind the line from the three, she's a pro. I mean, because that she did not shoot it last year. She wouldn't even. She never even stepped outside the three. So for her ability to, to raise up and shoot a pull up, like she does, as hard as she can go and, and elevate like she does. There was a ball wedged in the rim in the K State game, and she stood there and just took a step up, and knocked it out at five eight. The kid has to have a forty inch vertical easily, and she uses that on a jump shot. And then her ability to finish at the rim. But we really felt like the second time around, it's really important to look at okay. Second time, but, but it was it was a game plan going into the first one. We tried to do some more things with Baker. We, we didn't have as much success. But she's watching film. We're watching film. What worked for us? Where, where's that kid's sweet spot? Where does she score? Where, what's her efficiency? That was saying out there. Coaches win practice. Players win games. So we talked to them about, then your job is, if that's what we're trying to do, if, the, if, she, if that's her spot and, and she gets there and, and scores and has a, is effective 10 times, OK, let's get it to six. And those other four times make her go somewhere else. And when she gets to the offensive foul driving it left, that's what we're talking about. And, and you know, and, and, and it's, I, it's magnified the second time because we're both doing the same thing. Okay, what worked? How do we want to ISO? Where do we want to put people uh, uh, offensively? And I thought defensively, we, we, weren't, we weren't sharp. We didn't have a lot of energy. We didn't play things right as far as not sets about tendencies. Because if I'm really good doing one thing, we got, again, th th those guys are too good to take away all of it. But if we can cut it in half or 40% limit that, and when we did, and we and we did a better job in that during that stretch, and we Asia takes a huge charge on Baker, who had taken six on us at their place and protected the rim, and, and then we get the it's five seconds left, and they run the lob play on the baseline out of bounds play, and we turn them over and go get a layup. That's a four point swing, and a tight one, and it gives us and because we always say you you there not every play is created equal. If that's a defensive rebound and a you know the defensive rebound and we score on a half court offense, that doesn't feel the same as a turnover layup. We got you on that, you know, we didn't let you score on the out of bounds play, which she just, they lob it up to her and half the time you think she might dunk it, so, but we turn them over. You know, those are, that play, you know, if that's a defensive rebound and a half, score and a half court offense, it doesn't feel the same. So we, you have to manufacture your own energy point, energy, energy opportunities there, and then, and respect that we're into the second half of it and it's a dog fight. And there's a bunch of us that are clawing and, and scrapping and, 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 and trying to get our head above water. Well, was that what you said? I mean, obviously the timeout, they go up seven. And that was when you well, responded with the run. Well, I said, said well, no, I wish, no, yeah, I wish, yeah. <laughs> they were that easy. Um, all I said, I said, do you, do, you understand, do you feel what it is defensively? And they kind of looked at me. I said, well, I'm a little alarmed. We don't realize it's just our inability to contain one-on-one. -on -one. Mm -hmm. Because it got to the rim and we didn't help. Because I said at halftime, I said, okay, if I'm guarding the ball, so I always make that about me, the, you know, if I'm not a good defender, if I'm guarding the ball, everyone behind me should think, what, you're getting beat. I said, well, you need to think about that, all your teammates, because right now we can't, we're not able to stay in front of anybody, right? And we can't cushion because they all shoot the three. The zone wasn't, they're four for 10 from the three and five different, four different guys hit them. So I didn't feel comfortable just sitting in a zone and, and hope they don't make a bunch of shots. I said, so position yourself. If you're the deepest guy and it's on a wing, position yourself, talk yourself into, be pessimistic. That, that guy gets beat, I need to make sure I put myself in a position to, to help on the drive. And then the next guy's got to help the helper, because then they let go of one and got a layup when we slid over. I said, but we can't just fall asleep because we're not guarding the ball on the other side. Because what are you going to guard the ball, two seconds? Maybe once in a possession? Sit down and do the best you can to stand. And we started, then we started, we got some tough shots, some tough twos, and then they came off the rim, mid lane, and then we went. But yeah, so that's what it was. It wasn't, there wasn't a play. There's not a certain play they ran. It's, and they played in the middle of the floor. Think about it, what we call the corridor, which is the rim's right in front of you, so it's not forcing anybody. You know, you got to fight them. Turn and run and fight to the elbows. Try to keep it and fan it. So we did a better job there. And then we get some high percentage shots and some and ones. And those are momentum plays. And then Nat, Nat hit the big three. How is this team's for you with the pace of the offense? Eh, not very good. I thought we got stuck. I thought they, you know, they, 
Everybody calls it different. We call it blue, they call it ice, the guys call it down, an on-ball screen, they jump on top of it and don't let you try to use the on-ball screen to the middle of the floor. And then when you have a guy in the corner, which we do a lot in motion, then it gets stuck. And we, you, it took us a while to get out of it on one side of the floor. Um, I thought we missed opportunities to throw Chelsea the ball in the middle of the floor because when the ball's on the baseline, you can load up and wall up and help because everybody's on the weak side. When the ball's in the middle of the floor and you have shooters on the outside, that's why Lauren gets the N1 because she's driving it at Terry Allen Nat, and both those guys start to shade and Lauren takes it and goes, gets an N1 at the rim. So when those opportunities presented themselves and when we watch it, there'll be more than we took. But we got stuck. We got stuck because they just kind of cut the court and try to keep us on one side, which that's what you know everybody wants to do because offensively we want to go to the second and third side. How did you like having five in double figures tonight besides the three seniors scoring in double figures? How about Shayla and Lauren? Yeah, and yeah. Well, the, you know those guys, those guys, you know, have an opportunity to step up and, and, and much as they clog the lane with with uh, Chelsea in there, but you know a, a play that's not going to be in an article is the inside out kick out three from Bunny to Shay. You know that it gets collapsed and it's a paint touch. It's a ball in the paint. It doesn't matter if it's a pass or a drive. And we're really efficient, and so is everybody else in America. When the ball comes in and make a good decision, and Bunny didn't have it, she didn't have it in rhythm, kicked it out. Shea's sitting there begging for the ball, being a greedy receiver and being a ready shooter and hits it. That's a big play because there's not room for her to do anything. Because when as I told Chelsea, I said, there's not room to put it down, even facing in the lane. There's no room to put it down because it's so crowded. Asia got a good, you went lane line, I think, left in the first half, I think one of your first or second possessions. That angle was, was better for us. We just didn't get enough. Then we make free throws down the stretch because that's where we get some separation. Your ideas do really, really well in the, the press when they start to slow yeah. everything out. Of, did you coach that out of her or did she just come in? No, she's, she's yeah, that's good because she's gotten a lot better about catch, pass fake, and then get her head up. She recognizes you don't, the, the, you know, press offense, the less dribbles, the better because we can all, you know, you can advance the ball faster on a pass and you could dribble that thing up. And what, what typically what young point guards do, they don't, they don't trust themselves to let go of it, especially with all that speed and athleticism. She did a good job of, and then around her we had guys and found windows in press off. And so she got it ahead and got it across half court where she used to, you know, because I start watching the shot clock to make sure we're not getting a 10 second count. And she was across at five. Much, she's grown really in a, from a maturity and, a, and a, a sense that I need to advance that and not try to dribble it too much. And I always say two dribbles and get rid of it. And if you can do it in one, do it in one. Because they were trying to try, because it was their ball on a jump the whole, last three and a half minutes. You know, as I said, stay off the sideline, try to jump ball because it's going to be their possession back. And that's where they tried that. That's where when Chelsea caught that one in the corner. Chelsea Gardner. You, you talked about the, the dog fight mentality. And, yeah. And obviously it was that way at their place. It yeah. Was that way here most of tonight. Yeah. I mean, is there something about the two teams that, that match up that way? Or? Well, I think I think both, both have – you know, you look at them, you know, arguably one, I think one of the best guards in the league, and I think we've got one of the best bigs in the league, you know, so we play through them and play around them. So then it's how can you limit her touches and how can we limit battle touches? Mm -hmm. And then for them, it's how do you take advantage of your advantage because at their place, they went seven for 10 from the three and five out of the six in the first half were by bigs. They stretched them, ran them off screens and spread them. Then, so then, okay, then can we play in the paint and take advantage of our advantage? So I think both, but oftentimes it's the guys around them that are the difference makers, that don't get caught watching. They don't get caught watching battle play, and we don't get caught watching Chelsea play, oftentimes. And when you do that and you just stand, then your offense becomes stagnant. But I thought at times we tried to drive and kick and get to the rim, and I thought Asia gave us some pressure, and Shayla got some tips and offensive rebounds, so better. But both teams are similar, just different different guys, I mean different positions. What do you think about Oklahoma State coming in? You know, yeah, I've seen them a couple times watching someone else. I know they beat Iowa State, Brittany Martin off of, uh, I think it's an out-of-bounds play with about two seconds left. Martin can score like these guys. Donahoe can score. They have a little freshman, uh, sophomore point guard now that played behind, um, uh, uh, what's her, the point guard last year that's playing? Bias. Bias, thank you. I had nightmares, so I shouldn't remember her name. <laughs> um, so she's done a good job and really, really athletic lefty kid. And, and he played, same thing. Everybody's good. The coaches are good in this league. They'll play scouting report defense. They've traditionally played us a lot of 2-3. Um, but uh, but, but you know, both, you know, they, uh, somebody said they didn't, they lost to Baylor at home. And, um, but at, prior to that, they go over to Iowa State and win, you know, and hang in there like we did and win in a one possession game. So we'll have our hands full. I don't, I, I mean, I know personnel because there are so many returning players and how talented they are. Um, but we'll have our hands full, and it's a great opportunity for us to continue our run here and, and get another W, and, and, and then obviously with the paint game, just to celebrate those that are that are survivors that are here, and certainly honor those that 
aren't here and, and uh, great energy with uh, with uh, Pink Zone game. What kind of adjustments? I mean, you guys have been going on a little bit of a run. You had that three-game winning streak, and then you guys <coughs> lost at Baylor on Sunday. And right. Were there huge well, if you, the two things, and I'll tell you, when we don't turn the ball over, we give ourselves a chance, and we've won, right? And we play with more energy on the defensive end because I think it's there are three things that define your team. We said it. I said it early in the year, and it. And the definition wasn't to our favor, but I think I believe that has changed now. Three things: how hard do you compete? How hard do you compete when things are bad? Like when you go down and think about it. Two of our road wins, we were down one big and one pretty big. Eight at Iowa State feels like 17 anywhere else. And then how hard do you compete on the defensive end? And especially the second time around, because everybody knows what everybody's doing. And then you got to manufacture, get some rebounds, get out in transition, score at the free throw line. Got to manufacture some things, and those those three things. When we asked ourselves those questions, what three weeks ago, we didn't like the answer that we weren't who we were supposed to be. That answer has changed now, but we still have to get better. I mean, we certainly those are areas for us to improve. But if you look at it, that's really true. Now there are more in the game, but I think that's pretty fair. It really identified us early, and I think it is now. Dry skates or your snowmobiles, all you Southerners.